Hi, I'm Andrew Baker's Gas. We're here today to do a comparison video on the Multimatic 220 by Miller and then the ESOP Rebel 205 AC-DC machine. So this is, uh, these two machines have been very popular um, and we've get, been getting a lot of questions and comments and to do some more stuff on content on these two units. So in this video, I'm just gonna do a comparison on how they differ and how they compare. Um, and in my opinion, which one's better, which one's worse, and, and where they lack and where they don't lack. So let's just jump right in on both of them. So as you guys may or may not know, both of these units will do AC TIG. So it's an, a three-in-one, it'll do everything, right? It'll MIG, stick, TIG, not only DC TIG, but also AC TIG. So both of them, so you can weld aluminum TIG with them. Um, you can put spool guns on both of them and do aluminum that way as well. And they both pulse TIG as well. So um, not on AC, but on DC. Uh, but they're both, they're similar in that, that their ranges of what they do. They both have dual gas ports, so you can hook up two bottles at the same time. Um, then you can keep, you know, the Miller, you can keep everything hooked up at once and flip flop back and forth between TIG and MIG. The ESOP, you cannot do that. You have to unplug and reconnect on the front end of the unit. Um, that is a downside to the ESOP, but other than that, they both have dual gas ports. You can keep gas hooked up to the boat. Now you can see physically looking at them both, which one in, in my eyes, your eyes would be more rugged. Now the ESOP, obviously the case is more rugged. It's got multiple handles. It's, it's actually, it's IP23 rated. So, um, it, it, it'll withhold up to water spray, that sort of thing. And the Miller, not as rugged looking, a little bit longer, a little bit taller, um, but just just different in what they, the way they look. Now, now, if we open up that side door on the ESOB, and as you guys may or may not know, that no latch, just clips open. And then when we hit the door all the way open, we notice ESOB put an LED light inside. So we can see our spool, our drive roll setup, everything inside the unit. Right here, nozzle, diffuser, contact tip holder right here. Pretty nice, just keep everything right inside. Got our drive rollers. Now this one has a one, one wheel drive roller with an idler wheel that pulls down on it. We just got that, and then our tensioner. But that light, that light is very nice. Keeps it shine bright inside there so you can change it out. Then on the inside we got our recommended parameters for what kind of, what we're running, wire size, right? And then whether we're gonna be on 120 or 230, and then just recommended wire feed speed and voltage on that. So the 205 has a 20% duty cycle on AC TIG at 205 amps. The 220 has a 20% duty cycle at 210 amps on AC TIG. That's one of our biggest questions asked what's the duty cycle on AC TIG? So it's 20% at maximum amperage um, on both units. But I've welded with both, and I'll tell you here in a little bit what we think about that. So we'll open up the Miller. Now you'll notice, same thing, one dry roller, idler wheel, very similar on the dry roll systems. No light, we can see. Not a big deal, but it is nice to have. That's a nice feature. Uh, trigger plugs in there, gun goes in there, and then we got our spool. Uh, this one is obviously 110, 220, they both are. There's our adapter plug for our 110, and then the ESOB comes with a uh, adapter cord inside the box set. It comes with a 220 plug already on it, and then you adapt to the 110 plug. So we'll shut that door back up. Now, going over the weldability of both, I will tell you, um, I've ran them both a lot. And they, the Miller, Everyone always questions, well, what's the AC TIG like? It's the most popular question on these units. The AC TIG on the Miller, if anybody's familiar with the older style diversion from Miller, it's very similar to that, but it's a little bit better, uh, a little bit more control on it. Um, I, d I don't mind it at all, it's very nice. Now, it's, it is not a dynasty by any means, but it still welds well on AC output for aluminum welding. Now, the ESOP, on the other hand, did a lot of aluminum welding with the ESOM on AC with the TIG torch. I, uh, very, very nice. A lot more con a lot, lot more control and a lot more range. So I can change the frequency on this. Um, I can change my DCEP and DCEN, right? Our cleaning and our, 
our penetrating function. So a lot more control on the AC output side on the ESOP Rebel, which is pretty cool because it, it, when, you, when you get the kind of control this machine has, to get that in a Miller, you gotta step up to a Dynasty to get that kind of control. So this one has it. Um, very nice TIG output. Where I think these two are, uh, they differ, is on the MIG side of things. The Miller will run, uh, it MIG welds very well. It does it very well, it welds very similar to, you know, the 141, the 191, all those, the Miller's building up to the 220. Um, I like the short arc, runs well. It's got auto set, so you just set the thickness, wire diameter, gives you your settings, very simple, welds nice. The ESOB, I'm not a huge fan of the Tweco 180 gun, but it still MIG welds nice. I just, I feel that in my, my hands when I'm running the 180 gun, I just, um, it, it doesn't, I don't like it as much as I do the Miller on the MIG side of things. But same thing, it's got smart MIG, so it's like a synergic setting, so it automatically sets your parameters, and then you tell it what wire, what material, and it's a synergic setting, so it's gonna balance voltage with wire feed speed when you pull the trigger. Uh, and no matter what gas you run in it, it's gonna automatically set that on a smart MIG. Now you can go to a manual feature, and then you can go back, same thing with the Miller, you can go to manual, you don't have to use auto set or smart MIG on either one. And then to go to the front of the units here, as you can see, we, we can keep everything hooked up. So we can hook our, our TIG and our ground up and our MIG gun up, and we can flip flop between the two on the Miller with, with, with super ease. I mean, all I gotta do is hit my foot pedal and it'll flip flop over the TIG. This one, we cannot do that. We gotta flip flop polarity. We gotta plug our TIG torch in. So it takes a little bit more time on the setup so that's where the Miller shines over the ESAM, just because you can keep everything hooked up. No trouble, flip-flops in between. The screens, as you can see, this is an LCD display. Pretty nice, it's all color. I mean, it, it, it really is pretty easy to set up, so you just, we're gonna go into Smart MIG, tell the wire size, material size, and then it gives you a recommended parameter, right? And then we got a 16 gauge and we can change that up and down, right? 14 gauge, 12 gauge. You just keep increasing eighth inch. Pretty nice. And it's gonna give you some recommended parameters when you start to pull the trigger, but it's automatically gonna adjust for your contact tip to work distance, uh, your angle, that sort of thing. So it's gonna help out in that. Whereas the auto set, when we're on auto set, we just tell it material and wire size, and it's not gonna automatically adjust to our contact tip to work distance or our angle or that sort of thing. But we can always go back and adjust those parameters to our likings outside of the offset, or we can just shut it off, go right into manual mode. Same thing with this. We can just shut that off, go right into manual mode, adjust my wire feed and my voltage independently of one another. It's perfect. So let's go up to AC TIG here. And then I'll go to AC TIG here. Now you can see a little bit different technology. This one, right, I had the toggle down. This one has a nice scroll screen. We kind of get into it. Now this one, I'll show you. So it gets in the functioning um, parameter guide. So it gives you all the parameters, what we're welding, what size, you know, T's, laps, corners, that sort of thing kind of gives you some different things to set up on. Now, as the Miller, where we're in TIG, we got auto set on. We just tell it material, tungsten, it gives us a target range. So it's not gonna give us all the functionality on this, on the TIG aluminum side as, you know, the, the Miller's not gonna give us what the ESOP does. But just to be answering more questions, as far as the, the TIG output, this shines over the, the Miller. That's just my personal opinion. Um, and to go back into, you know, the Miller is assembled in Wisconsin. The ESOP is not assembled in the United States. The Miller is. Um, both of these units, plenty in stock. I, uh, got, I got nothing good to say about both. We've seen them in industry. I've seen them in school settings, um, in people's home shops, their garages. I've welded with people in their garages with both of them. Um, and you know, it, it's, a, it's a hard line, to, you know, it's a dividing line there. Which one would you choose, right? Which one would you pick? 
I, I, I like the Miller 220, I really do. It, it MIG welds nice, it TIG welds nice, and it gets the job done for what you wanna do. But if you were somebody that wanted more functionality on your TIG, your AC output, you would wanna go with the ESOP Rebel because it has more setups. You can change your parameters a little bit more. Um, but like I said before, it doesn't hold up MIG wise. Now Miller, there's more service centers in the, across the country for Miller. Um, so if something does happen, service center is usually right around the corner, right? You can drop it off there, whether it's warranty or whether they got you got to pay to get it fixed. doesn't matter. There, there's still a lot more service centers for Miller than there are ESOM service centers. As far as problems go that we've seen, and we are a service center, um, likewise, I've seen them both come back. But usually I've seen more ESOBs come back, but the problem is always resolved and they always fix it and they always give it, fix our problems and then they go back and they don't come back. Miller, they, they come in, we fix them under warranty or if they're outside of warranty, that sort of thing. So equally, I won't say they're equal as far as coming into the service center, but they do come back. So just to give you guys a heads up and I'm not saying they're horrible machines, right? Don't buy, no, I'm not saying that. Everything's gonna have some trouble along the way, right? Even new new vehicles, new anything new that you buy could have some glitches, but both of them hold up very well. Um, we've had them in the schools now for four years side by side. It's hard to compete, I, you know, it's divided. It's 50-50 on the kids, what they decide and that sort of thing. But um, like I said, if I was gonna, I, li I like the 220. But if you wanted more functionality, the ESOP 205 is where it's at on the TIG welding side to help with. If you got any questions, comments, please leave them below. We, we love to hear from you guys, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for some more.